There's one more part of the grading system for beef carcasses, and that is yield grading. And remember, yield grading is an estimate of the lean meat yield, how much meat is going to be yielded from this particular carcass and how much fat and bone is going to have to be thrown away during the processing of a carcass into ribeye rolls and strip loins and tenderloins and top sirloins and all the round and check cuts as well. And so what we want to know is from this carcass, what percent of this carcass will end up in the form of saleable product to uh, some restaurant or food service or retail uh, company. As we take a look at the factors that a grader looks at, they're going to look at several factors to determine the fat thickness, the fatness of a carcass, and then also the muscularity of that carcass. And then they'll look at those factors and determine whether it fits into one of five grades. And the yield grades are very easily one, two, three, four, and five. Those are the yield grades. Yield grade one is the best. Yield grade one would be a carcass that would have the highest percents lean meat yield from a carcass. Uh, and actually, more technically, the, the term is the highest percent closely trimmed boneless retail cuts from the round loin rib and chuck. But you can think about it as lean meat yield. Number one is the best. And number five is the fattest, lightest muscled, and the worst, and would have the lowest lean meat yield. So remember, there are five yield grades, one, two, three, four, and five. One's the best, and five is the worst. Now, how does a grader determine a one from a five? Well, the first step, they're going to look at the fat thickness again at this 12th, 13th rib cross section. Remember, we looked at marbling score for quality grade, and now we're going to look at the same surface again for the yield grade. We're going to look at the fat thickness that's measured opposite this ribeye. We've figured, we've determined through research, this one measurement is the best single indicator of total carcass fatness. And the fatter the carcass is at this location, the fatter this carcass is throughout the, uh, through, through the rest of the parts of the carcass. The second thing that the grader will look at is the size of this ribeye muscle itself. The larger this muscle, this is a large muscle, the long isthmus muscle, the ribeye muscle, one of the largest muscles in this carcass. The larger this muscle is, generally, the more muscular the carcass is in other places. Other factors that we look at are carcass weight, because we know as animals get heavier, they tend to get fatter, so that's part of the equation as well. And then also the kidney, pelvic, and heart fat, which is the fat on the inside of these carcasses. So as you take a look at it, this would be kidney fat. Pelvic fat would be up here in the round area, the pelvic girdle. And then heart fat is down here in the forequarter itself. As we take a look at that equation, those four factors, the fat thickness opposite the 12th rib, the ribeye area, the carcass weight and kidney knob, those four factors would be put into an equation to determine the overall yield grade, which equates to the percent closely trimmed boneless retail cuts from these carcasses or the lean meat yield from these carcasses. Let's apply what we've learned about quality grading and yield grading to these two carcasses. There's a significant difference between these two carcasses, and you'll see from what we determine for quality grade and yield grade that there's also a very significant value difference between these two carcasses. First of all, let's look at quality grade. And what we'll look at is, again, we'll look at the lean color of the ribeyes. And then also we'll look at the cartilage, particularly in this area, the very cartilage tips, to determine whether the animals are old or young. And what we'll see is, first of all, both of these carcasses are young. So the, the other major criteria for quality grading is how much marbling is in the ribeyes. In fact, this carcass would be called USDA Choice, and this carcass would be called USDA Select. So there is one grade difference between these two. Now every cut from this carcass could be called USDA Choice, but every cut from this carcass would be called USDA Select. The next factor is the lean meat determination, which we call yield grade. And the first thing we'll do is we'll look at the fat opposite this ribeye. And again, you'll see as you compare this carcass to this carcass that there is a significant difference, with this carcass being significantly leaner. As you take a look at the leanness, that would be an indication that this carcass from top to bottom would be leaner over the round, over the loin, over the, the rib and the chuck than this carcass would be. Therefore, this carcass has a superior yield grade superior lean meat yield, and actually would calculate it out to be a yield grade one. 
And this carcass calculates out to be a yield grade four. Remember, there's five yield grades with one being the best and five being the worst. And so we have a choice yield grade one and a select yield grade four. 